would like to accomplish the uh, continuation of the recognition that God is the creator and that God is present in everybody's life. And we want to take that message to the people. The second Sunday after the flood was actually the first Sunday that I attended. There was a, an element in the service where they called passing of the peace, where we greet one another. And we got to that point of the service, and that's not something Cedar had done. And we get to that point, and all of a sudden, we're in a different world for me, and I just burst out crying, because this was not, at that time, home. And one of the first gentlemen came up to me, and he says, I've got a broad shoulder here. Cry on me. I think that was the first true welcome when I knew, okay, this is going to work out. I think the greatest thing that stands out in my mind is the open arms that greeted us when we came in because we were just kind of like in this boat afloat, didn't have any idea where we were going to go or what our future was going to be, and they just opened not only their doors but their arms and their hearts for Cedar people. I married into Cedar. My wife's family had been there since about the end of World War II. And so for 45 years, we were members of Cedar. Then when the flood shut us down, uh, and a year later when Cedar was actually sold, uh, we joined first and tried to get on with our lives. I've had an analogy that this is like a marriage and we've gotten to know each other, decided we liked each other, and we have to work through relationships as groups just as we do as single people. Because First and Cedar are primarily traditional, we had very similar backgrounds. So there's been a few tweaks, but they're wonderful people. I'm glad to be here. When we first came here, the congregation size was somewhere in the order of 12, 1300, with sometimes 750, 800 active people. It started in 1875 by N.A. McConnell, who came out here from Ohio. The congregation that was the Christian church on the west side started the, what is then was called Second Christian Church in late 1800s. We have the original building, which was the Presbyterian building that the first group bought 
and moved into for several years uh, over on the west side. And then they built a church on this side, which they call the Old Red Brick. And it was at 4th Street and 5th Avenue. Uh, then this church was built uh, in 1912 to 13 area. They moved in here, dedicated it in 1913. And uh, this was, of course, the, the premier church property on this street at that time. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, weathered rather well. I think the favorite feature about this building is when you walk in, it's the stained glass windows and also our pipe organ. They just are awesome. I just, I've always liked the church. It's a, just beautiful. I was sitting in the worship service a couple weeks ago and just as it was time for communion, the sun came out and it highlighted the communion table and I think that's absolutely one of my favorite memories. When church is in service on a sunny Sunday morning, the light coming through here is just gorgeous. I also enjoy the organ, but I'm a member of the choir, so for me sometimes when my voice is not up to par, the organ's nice and loud and can drown me out. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things first was, has been noted for for a long time was a live nativity scene. And so out on the front steps uh, every Christmas for uh, about two weeks we would have a live nativity scene with, with sheep and some different animals and everybody dressed up in period costumes and, and it was very nice. perhaps from a spiritual viewpoint, the building is probably the last thing we should uh, hang on to as a spiritual thing because there is no spirit in a brick building. It's the people inside that make the church. I see us getting back to some of the basics of Christianity and getting away from these traditions and rituals which, while they have value, can kind of constrain you because you get into the routine of, okay, we're going to come in at this time. This is the order of the service. We don't do anything different. We see the same people that we know and love and care about, and, and we don't get to meet new people. I see this as an extraordinary opportunity for us to go out into the community to welcome new people, to have a relationship with God. That's what Christians, what disciples especially, are supposed to be all about, is going out and seeking new people.